Hello everyone and welcome to the Hacktify Cyber Security channel. My name is Rohit Gautam and today we are going to discuss about a very very common question that comes all the time to me that is do you use a VPS? Of course I use a VPS and I'm going to show you my setup of what VPS I use and what are the tools that I run onto that and what is the main purpose of using that VPS. Before we start the video, let's give a big thanks to stock. So mind mapping has been a big thing lately. A lot of more and more pen testers and bug hunters are using it to just remember things and so just map out their surface, how to think and other stuff. I, I had Xbox really early with this and Rohit made a video on mind mapping for bug bounties and pen testing. So if you want to have a video version where he explains his thought patterns, definitely check that out. All right, so thanks Stock for including my mind map into your video. I highly recommend watching that particular video in which he talks about new bug bounty content creators wherein you can learn a lot of awesome stuff. All right, now coming back to the question, which is the most affordable or cheap VPS hosting or what do you use? How does your setup looks like? So I use this particular VPS, which is being provided by an Indian company with the name eWebGuru. And I like to use this. So I just stumbled upon this while I was searching for a cheap VPS, which works out kind of fine for me. So here you can see I'm onto this particular plan, which is Coral VPS. I just did it for the first month plan, which it says over here for 799, but, but obviously after all the charges, taxes, it is not 799. So I'm going to show you how much does the total cost end up after you purchase this. All right, so let's see the quick features first. So over here, you get a 3 GB dedicated RAM onto your Linux Cloud VPS. You get a burstable RAM of 6 GB. Now, what is that? According to them, they say, if you are completely using your dedicated RAM and you want some bit of extra speed, you can use a virtual RAM, which is they call it as a burstable RAM. I don't know how it works like, I have not used it because my system resources does not go above 3 GB because I do not do that much of stress load onto the VPS. Now it is core two, they give a one IP address. The disk space is kind of low because the amount of fuzzing that I do or the amount of data collection that I do onto the VPS makes it comparatively slow with the installed list of tools as well. So, I have increased my disk space also, and I will show you how much does it cost for increasing the disk space. Now, the best thing that I liked about this VPS hosting was the internet speed and the bandwidth. So they offer 100 Mbps internet speed on any plan that you take, either it is Perl, Mighty or Mighty Air VPS. And the best thing is, it is unmetered and unlimited bandwidth. That means there are no restrictions on amount of requests that you send to any particular target website, which means unlimited fuzzing, unlimited enumeration, unlimited recon. All right. Apart from that, uh, these are options are not important for me or I won't use them like SSL, the varnish server, CSS, JS optimizer, etc, etc. All right, so I purchased this. Now let me show you to my client area. Here you can see it finally costed me around 1099 INR for a month for this particular service. All right, so my service is active with them and I'll tell you my experience that I have faced for the particular month, obviously, Remember, this video is not a paid promotion. This is something which I stumbled upon and I 
liked it so this is my honest review for this particular service you are totally free to go on to any service that you like there are many services that are being given by aws digital ocean etc now let me quickly connect to the server oops just give me a second so once i am connected to the server it looks something like this so let me just zoom a little bit and you can see over here there are some files that you can see and some bash scripts that i use onto this particular server all right now what do i do actually onto the server so basically i do only three things onto this vps the first one is subdomain enumeration i really love to do subdomain enumeration because i get those hidden targets which are being missed by many other people the second thing that i do is fuzzing through which i try to identify sensitive information from the targets and the last one that i do is subdomain takeovers these are only the three major things that i perform onto the vps apart from this i do not use the vps for anything else yes sometimes i use wayback urls for the targets so i get a lot of endpoints to which i can use it further later on for identifying other vulnerabilities so let's get back to the server and here you can see there are so many files that i have created so basically what i do is i have all the subdomains that i have enumerated for all the bug bounty programs that includes hackerwin bug crowd integrity etc and i continuously keep on checking for new subdomains for those particular targets now the tools that i have installed over here is nuclei slackcat find domain kxss a new and i think a subdomain takeover tool so i can do it with nuclei as well but i have also installed subzi over here to identify subdomain takeover vulnerabilities now you can see over here i have all the targets subdomain takeover into this particular file so let me just head this and you can see over here this is the output of nuclei wherein i was able to find out some of the subdomain takeovers and i was able to report them now i do this for all the subdomains that i have identified for all the bug bounty programs and i constantly keep on checking for new subdomains if they are deployed i keep my vps running 24/7 so it keeps on waiting to identify if any subdomains has been updated it takes data from the project discovery website and it downloads it from there as well as it also takes data from bug bounty targets data github repository along with this what i have done is i have taken the top 1 million websites by alexa and i have used those websites as well so here are the target domains i have done the subdomain enumeration for all those websites and i have been doing subdomain takeovers on that as you can see there are 1 lakh all targets which i have been saved into this file and the subdomain takeovers of that target applications output is saved into this file this file contains all targets probe.txt which basically means i have probed them to identify if they are alive or dead so that i can feed this output to some other tool like nuclei i use slackcat for notifications and it sends me cool notifications on my slack dashboard now going here you can see i use chaos to identify if any new subdomain is there there has been deployed for any particular target so let me just show what exactly is inside it so these are some of the little bash scripts that i have written as you can see it sends a request to the chaos data project discovery with the target name and after that it is going to download it unzip it and it is going to try for subdomain takeovers 
and it sends the output onto my cell phone on which I can see what are the subdomain takeovers that are successful happened. Now if I run this, it is going to run something like this. Let me just show you. So it is going to ask you to enter the program name. So I can enter the program name, let's say Uber. So I will just type the name of the program and I will hit enter. So once I hit enter, it is going to download the project discovery data sets for Uber and it is going to unzip it and save it over here. And then sub Z is going to start automatically onto that with concurrency of 100 and it is going to send the results onto my Slack dashboard. So this is how I'm going to identify it if it is vulnerable or not. As you can see, it has started. Let me just close this. All right, so this is how it works. Let me just clear this. And similarly, I have one more subdomain takeover script over here, which uses nuclei. All right, apart from this, let me go to tools. All right, so once I'm into this tools folder, you can see I came inside parent spider. So I use this tool to identify all the way back URLs and I choose those particular URLs to identify for the more vulnerabilities like XSS or SSRF or SQL. So let me just show you for a target that I have done this and I have done this for Uber. As you can see over here, these are all the target subdomains and these subdomain contains all the targeted Wayback URLs. For example, if I show you for, let's say this one, login.uber.com. So let me show you for, and you can see these are all the URLs with the parameter and the keyword that is fuzz. So I sometimes use this onto my local machine for identifying if there are some specific set of vulnerabilities. Now, what I do is I run a cron job wherein I send all the data that I have collected on here. Let's say those are the subdomains. I send them to my FTP server. Sometimes I also send all the data to my Slack dashboard. From there, I collect it and I save it to my hard disk. So I keep on saving the data that I have been enumerating onto this target VPS. I never delete any recon data that I have identified and I keep on saving it into my hard disk. So all right, this is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and understood what actually I do onto my VPS. So it's pretty much the three vulnerabilities that I try to identify and everything else I like to do it manually. So if you like this video, please press like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.